Most of the difficulty in dealing with probabilities lies not in solving the problem, but in organizing the problem. Venn diagrams are useful for helping us organize probability problems. In this example, we have two events, event A represented by a circle and event B also represented by a circle. The area inside the event A circle corresponds to event A occurring. The area outside the event A circle corresponds to event A not occurring, similarly with event B. So when we talk about the probability of event A occurring, we're referring to the area inside the event A circle. When we talk about the probability of event B occurring, we're talking about the area within the event B circle. The disjoint probability of event A or event B occurring is all of the area inside both circles A and B. The joint probability of event A and event B occurring is the area that exists within both circle A and circle B at the same time. With the Venn diagram, we can talk about all sorts of other more complicated probabilities, like the probability of event A not occurring, which is everything outside the event A circle, the probability of event B not occurring, which is everything outside the B circle, the disjoint probability of event A occurring or event B not occurring, the joint probability of event A occurring and event B not occurring, and any other combination of marginal joint and disjoint probabilities. A conditional probability is a little more complicated to show in the Venn diagram. The probability of A given B is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. In our Venn diagram, that's the area of the center part of the diagram divided by the event B circle. Let's look at an example. Suppose we define event A to be the price of IBM stock rises by at least $1 tomorrow. And we define event B as the price of GE stock rises by at least $1 tomorrow. Suppose we've looked at historical data on IBM and GE stock, and based on this data, we believe that the probability of IBM rising by at least a dollar is 5%. We indicate this on our Venn diagram by drawing an IBM circle and writing 5% within the IBM circle. Suppose we believe the probability of GE stock rising by a dollar is 3%. On our Venn diagram, we draw a GE circle, and in the circle, we write 3%. Now suppose if we look at the data further, we find that the probability of both IBM and GE stock rising by at least a dollar is 1%. On our Venn diagram, the probability of both IBM and GE rising by a dollar is represented by this center area. And in the center area, we write 0.01, the probability of both of the stocks rising by a dollar. Now recall, the probability of IBM stock rising by a dollar is 5%. We already have 1% in this center area, and that's within the IBM circle. That means the rest of the IBM circle must be 4%. The 4% on the left part of the IBM circle plus the 1% on the right part of the IBM circle gives us a total of 5% in the IBM circle, the probability of IBM stock rising by a dollar. Recall also that the probability of GE stock rising by a dollar is 3%. Again, we already have 1% sitting in the GE circle. That means that the portion of the GE circle on the right must be 2%. The 1% in the center plus the 2% on the right gives us a total of 3% in the GE circle. This is the probability of GE stock rising by at least a dollar. The area outside the two circles is the probability of neither IBM nor GE rising by a dollar. And this is the only area left in our diagram. On a Venn diagram, all the probabilities have to add to 1. So this area outside the two circles must be 1 minus 4% minus 1% minus 2% or 93%. With our Venn diagram completed, we can now answer all sorts of questions about IBM and GE stock. For example, suppose we want to know the probability of IBM stock rising by a dollar and GE not rising by a dollar. On the Venn diagram, the probability of event A occurring and event B not occurring is the left side of the event A circle. In our example, the left side of the event A circle contains 4%. So we conclude that the probability of IBM rising by a dollar and GE not rising by a dollar is 4%.
We can ask other questions. For example, what is the probability of IBM stock rising by a dollar or GE stock rising by a dollar? The disjoint probability of A or B occurring is all of the area within the two circles combined. In our diagram, that's 4% plus 1% plus 2% or 7%. So we conclude the probability of IBM stock rising by a dollar or GE stock rising by a dollar is 7%. An alternate way to organize probability problems is by using a probability table. This probability table shows two events. On the left margin of the table, we have one event, the price of GE stock rising versus the price of GE stock not rising. Across the top margin, we have the other event, the price of IBM stock rising or the price of IBM stock not rising. The four cells in the body of the table represent joint probabilities. The top left cell is the probability of both of the stocks rising. The bottom right cell is the probability of neither of the stocks rising. Finally, the cells on the right and the bottom margins of the table are marginal probabilities. We obtain the marginal probabilities by adding up the joint probabilities. Adding the joint probabilities horizontally gives us the marginal probabilities for GE stock. Adding the joint probabilities vertically gives us the marginal probabilities for IBM stock. The marginal probabilities on the right margin have to add to 1, and the marginal probabilities on the bottom margin have to also add to 1. Let's fill in the probability table with the information we have to see how it works. First, we know that the probability of IBM stock rising is 5%. This is a marginal probability, and it goes in the bottom margin of the table. We also know that the probability of GE stock rising by a dollar is 3%. This is a marginal probability, and it goes in the right margin of the table. The third piece of information we have is that the probability of both IBM and GE rising by a dollar is 1%. This is a joint probability. It goes in the body of the table in the cell corresponding to both IBM and GE rising. So here's our probability table. We have three numbers filled in. Based on these three numbers, we can complete the rest of the table. For example, we know that adding the numbers in the body of the table vertically gives us the numbers in the bottom margin of the table. Or in other words, the sum of these two cells has to equal 0.05. That means that this cell has to be 0.04. Also, if we add the numbers horizontally, the numbers in the body of the table have to add up to the number at the margin. Or in other words, these two numbers have to add up to 0 0.03, which means this number must be 0 0.02. The marginal probabilities along the bottom margin must add to 1. We have a 0.05 in one cell, which means the other cell must be 0.95. Similarly, the marginal probabilities in the right margin must add to 1. We have 0 0.03 in this cell, which means the other cell must be 0.97. We have one cell left, and we can figure out this number by either adding the cells horizontally or vertically. Either way gives us the same number, 0.93. We can then use this table like we use the Venn diagram to answer all sorts of questions about probabilities involving IBM and GE stock. For example, the probability that IBM stock rises and GE stock does not is 4%. The probability that neither stock rises is 93%. Remember that Venn diagrams and probability tables are not designed to solve probability problems. They're designed to organize probability problems. The first step in completing the problem is organizing it. Once organized, you can and then use the organized information to answer whatever problem you face.